So just as consumer devices have to be tested, as do industrial systems, but on a very different level. Industrial systems are made up of very complex algorithms that have to re operate reliably and safely 100% of the time. And just to put the prevalence of these embedded softwares into perspective, a large-bodied aircraft might, might contain 7 million lines of code, whereas a modern luxury car, this could contain 100 million lines of code, distributed across 100 control units in the vehicle. Now, th as these systems become more complex, the amount of testing required increases, and the industry is addressing this by moving testing from the road to the lab all the way down to maths in order to reduce their cost of test. And to fully understand this road to lab to math concept, I'd like to bring to the stage Ashish Naik. And in particular, we're going to have a look at how Jacobs has adopted the platform-based approach for their test cells. Tell us a bit more about the work that Jacobs does. Sure. Well, Jacobs Engineering focuses on turnkey design, construction, and operation of specialized technical facilities. Jacobs um, Engineering work in all sorts of areas, everything from aerospace to automotive to scientific research and motorsports. In particular, the engineering group um, are, are capable of looking after over $100 million worth of these projects annually. That's great, but I heard that they also worked on a test cell in Sweden recently. Can you talk to me about that? Well, the customer for this project was Scania, one of the world's largest bus and truck manufacturers. Scania wanted a test facility that they could replicate both summer and winter environmental conditions. Jacobs Engineering built and designed a test facility on a greenfield site that was able to run from minus 35 degrees up to plus 50 degrees Celsius. As well as this, they could recreate all sorts of environmental conditions, everything from rain, snow, and wind speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. Scania actually recorded vehicle parameters on the real-life road routes and used these signals using test automation to replay these signals within the test cell. These signals and test results were then used to actually validate the quality and performance and related safety parameters of their systems. So what kind of challenges did Scania present? Well, the key to running a facility like this is from a reliability point of view. These facilities are expensive to run, and the test article is expensive and hard to fabricate, and usually one of a kind. So in a system where the test article can actually be destroyed during testing, having a system that is either unreliable or data is lost is completely unacceptable. Well, I guess the big question here is, why did Jacobs choose an eye in the first place? Well, using NI LabVIEW and Measurement Studio, they managed to reduce their development time and therefore reduce their development costs. Jacobs Engineering really likes the NIPXI platform due to the wide variety of modules available. It's very rare that they have a signal or sensor that can't be brought into this platform. And having a system that is able to be rack mounted is convenient and be able to synchronize many channels from one chassis to multiple chassis is of huge importance to them. That's great. So in that last application, we saw how a Jacobs test cell combined simulations with real-world environmental elements in order to bring the road to the lab. But NI also have a strong presence in hardware in the loop, where we look to bring the lab to maths. And in particular, I want to talk about how we worked with Subaru in order to bring to market their very first all-wheel drive hybrid crossover SUV. Ash, perhaps you could tell us about that. Sure. Well, when Subaru were getting ready to release their first ever hybrid vehicle to production, they realized that physical test alone wasn't going to be enough to allow them to hit their levels of reliability, safety, and performance. They also realized that not all the tests that they wanted to do could be done using dynamometers alone. And doing this just using road, uh, road tests would be too expensive. So they realized they needed a hardware in the loop system to validate their system together. However, it had its own unique control requirements. What was so different about the control system? Well, when you bring together both an electric power plant and a petrol engine together, this creates a very complex control system for a production vehicle. And to, to validate this, the hardware in the loop system itself also needs to go alongside this uh, level of complexity. The engine motor control unit itself had its own challenges. 
the engine control unit had fast signals that needed to rerun at, and show non-linear models. And we need to recreate these signals in microsecond loop rates. Wow, so I guess the next question is, what were some of the driving factors that made Subaru choose NO platforms for their test systems? Well, the key to this type of simulation is bringing mathematics into an FPGA. And because using an NI Flex Rio is, is quite unique in having a large FPGA space and large bank of DRAM where we could store lookup tables that were created to show these nonlinear models using JMAG's JSOL's finite element analysis software. This was quite a unique situation on the market where using hardware and software allowed Subaru to do the type of testing they needed in the way that they wanted to do it. Wow, so what was the outcome? Well, we estimated with Subaru that doing this type of testing alone using physical tests would take 2,400 hours. And using an NI hardware in the loop system, not only could we reduce the development time, but we could increase test coverage. The final validation cycle using an NI hardware in the loop system was reduced down to 118 hours. Wow, that's great. Thanks again, Ash.